Hi folks, I've got a few odds and sods to do today on the Piaggio moped and let's have a little quick look down Jimmy's unit, see how he's getting on with that red car that he fixed that bumper on the other day. See you in a minute. Right, so we've just come down the unit now, just have a quick see what Jimmy's been up to. He's finished this red one there, you might remember the one with a big crack on it. Let's have a little closer look at it. Right, well this is where the crack was. If you can remember, it come down there and along there basically. And as you can see now, you can't see any crack there whatsoever. So that's a nice little job there done. And the customer's coming to pick this up very, very shortly. He's just gonna give it a little quick buff over and everything there is looking absolutely fantastic. Nice to see you on the back, Jimmy. It's normally, it's normally me on the back getting dirty like that. And Mummy's come down as well, Mummy, haven't you? Yeah. What do you reckon of that, Mummy? Perfection by my son, as done, always. You've done a nice job there, yeah. Always does. That one's at the next stage of preparation, so uh, that's ready to go. The bumper's getting prepared now for the Fiat, so everything's moving on. So I'm going to do a little bit on the Piaggio moped, so we're going to go back to the uh, log cabin, and I want to do a few little bits, because I'm coming down here tomorrow and I want to sort of get some finishing touches on. I might do some sandblasting while I'm down there. And I'm also going to take the other painted bits off, which is the front mud guard, the uh, binnacle cover for the actual handlebars as well, and get them primed up, ready to go. So, right, so we're going over now to the log cabin. I'll see you in a minute. Right, okay then, I've got loads of odds and odds, odds and odds, loads of odds and sods to sort out. Let's come and have a little look, see what I've got to do here. Well, as you can see, this is our swinging arm for the Piaggio mo moped, full of rust. So is all these other sort of bits, the ancillary bits like the engine case, the side stand there, as you can see. I did try to put that in the um, vinegar bath, as you can see, it come off all right, but it wouldn't take the paint off, so it's gonna have to be sandblasted. So I've got a few odds and sods to do here. I've actually stripped the components of it down, so it's a lot easier to clean as well. So uh, yeah, we've got to get this all painted and also resprayed. These window mechanisms here are off of the Reliant Regal. They're just gonna need a general clean up, I think. There's nothing really that needs to be done with these. I think they look galvanized anyway, so the, the, the finish should be good enough. So I'm gonna leave them as they are, just give them a good clean up. I've gotta take this front mud guard off of the Piaggio there. We've also got the bearings to put on at a later stage, as you can see. This happens quite a lot, as you can see, with older motorcycles that have probably been standing for a long time. You can't rely on grease and all that to be uh, lubricating as it should do and as you can see this grease has all gone solid in these old bearings here so we've got to take these off of the uh, off of the actual uh, bike itself off the shaft and put new bearings on and also the new bearing holder caps at the bottom there so that's got to be done now we've also got the other plastics on the bike as well which as you can see at the moment are a blue in color you probably can't see that now I've given this a, a, a wipe down with a wax and grease remover and also gone over it with a Scotch Bright pad and that's ready to take the new surface now. Now I can use this paint, this is only cheap satin black paint as well, this is for plastics and metal but just as a safeguard what I've actually got is this um, plastic primer, I don't know if you can see that on the bottom of the can there, it actually says it's a plastic primer. This comes out clear so this just puts a, a coat on this where we can actually bond our satin black to it and that should uh, do our job. So that's what I'm going to do with all the plastics for the bike. So I think it's time for me to do a little bit of sandblasting now. And once I get that done, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, right, what we've got here then is our plastic mud guard. As I said, it's all been cleaned. I'm just gonna give it a coat of this primer sealer and prepare it for our black.
Right, okay then, so I'm just going to get let that tack off for about 10 minutes. I'm going to give it another coat just to make sure, and then that's going to be ready for me black, so I'll see you in a minute. Right, okay then, what we've done there, we've given it two coats of the uh, plastic primer. I've just gone over with a fine dusting, first of all, of our black. This is the same black we actually painted the uh, the actual motorcycle bodywork in, so it's the same black. This is a satin finish, as I said, it's not higher gloss, but it's, it's achieved the sort of finish that I want. If I just show you, I know it's only had one quick coat, but you'll get the idea. Now, as you can see there, it's, it is a textured surface, as you know, like a plasticky textured surface, but. That is the actual finish I'm looking for, which is that that sort of a lovely texture there. And as you can see, we've only got one coat there, as you know, at the moment, but that's the black we're going for to match in with the bodywork. And it will be a satin type finish, not a high gloss when it's actually dried off. So it's still wet at the moment, but you get the idea. Right, well, my sand plaster's actually playing up at the moment, but I've actually got this cleaned down now, as you can see. It's as good as I'm going to get it. All I'm going to do now is give this a coat of this galvanised uh, underspray. This is ideal for preparing metal for painting and protecting it as well. So that's what I'm going to spray it with. Give it a coat of that. But with this thing, I'm going for a little bit more durability. I'm going to spray this with a high gloss black. So that's what we're going to be doing with that in a second. I'm just going to finish this off now and I'll see you in a minute. Right, okay then, got to start stripping this front end down. Now I've just clamped it in the vise for the moment, but uh, what we're dealing with here is rusted screws. We've got that one on the side there, as you know, and I've also got three at the top here, which you're supposed to undo and withdraw the mudguard over the top of the steering uh, the actual column there so I'm not going to be able to do that these screws are so rusted in and I haven't got my Dremel here as well so feeling around as well we've got this is very very sticky uh, the rotor there which means that the bearings a bit tight now the, the bearing doesn't feel grungy I think it's just the, the grease that's congealed in it so I'm gonna have to take all this apart now didn't really want to have to do this but this is what happens when you buy something which has been left for years and years. You've got to reinstate these things into service because if I would have just left that now and that would have rotated and rotated, it could have been running dry, heated up and caused damage. So you've got to strip it down. It's in this, it's in the vice at the moment, might as well do it. So, but one thing we've got to be careful of, as I said, is rusted fixings. And uh, obviously there's loads of crud on here as well. So I'm not too sure, oh, here we go. This is a plastic cover there. It can very easy to prise this sort of stuff off. And this is how cheaply made this sort of stuff is, look. It just holds on with two sort of clips there around that aluminium body. But as you can see, because that's a water trap, this is the sort of thing you end up with underneath it. As you can see, that is white corrosion there. Salt's got underneath it and obviously that's a problem. So we're going to have to take all this apart and clean it up. But as you can see, these are the sort of fixings that we've got issues with. I tried to undo that one when I was down the unit, but I couldn't. And as I say, coming around the front here, these here, are just not going to happen but I haven't got a Dremel, my Dremel's broken at the moment so normally what I would do there would be to grind the slot into that and obviously then uh, knock it around with a screwdriver. I might have to drill the head off of this so that, that I can literally withdraw this so that's where I'm at at the moment. I'll see you in a minute and enjoy this little bit of music. Okay, I've been pretty lucky with this one. Um, as you can see, I've got it off without damaging the, the actual plastic as well, so I'm happy with that. Now, on taking it off, 
I'm pretty lucky here because what can happen is you saw me tapping away there. I've, I've had it before where you've tapped away and behind there's only an alley, a thin alley bracket and you've actually snapped the lugs off and you'll find a lot of these cheap mopeds where people have tried to take the mud guards off after maybe two or three years when they've all corroded and do what I've just done. They try tapping the screw round uh, which I initially tried first once they put a slot in it and then they've actually broke the lug behind it. I'm pretty lucky here because it looks like these are just those little uh, metal clips that sit over a bracket so I can literally file that flat, grind this off and just put a new uh, metal tag over the top there and then with a brand new screw in. So that's going to be okay there. My problem is, is that these screws, as you know, inside there, you probably can't see them, but they go into this alley bracket here by the looks of it. And I've got to be very careful with that. Right, well, all I'm going to be doing here for a while is doing a bit of fiddling about, as you know. And um, I've put, two, put another coat on this black now. Let me show you. So as you can see now, this is the sort of coverage I'm looking for. It's a lovely sort of satin finish. And I'm well pleased with that. And we know it's going to stick well because we've used a plastic primer. So I'm very, very happy with that. Well, I've been a little bit lucky here. These fixings are slightly different than the one that I've just taken off in the fact that they've got nuts on the back of them. And uh, once I've lubricated the nuts, I'm able to uh, get the 10 mil socket on there and actually undo them. Although the bolt is still stuck in this last one. There's always one that gets stuck at there. So I'll just undo this and I'll show you exactly what we got here. I might have to tap this one through. This is what we're looking at, let me show you. So if I would have had to have drilled them out, which again is very awkward holding it in the vise, this is the bolt coming from the top there, as you can see, and on the back of it is the nut. So I would have had to have drilled through that, and that's why it took me so long to drill through probably this one, because they've actually got this collar on them, these bolts there, as you can see, so I was actually drilling through that as well. So that's why it took me so long to drill that one out. I will replace these anyway, but uh, Right, I've taken that nut off of there now. I'm just going to need to drift out this remaining bolt, I hope. Bear with me. I'll take the nut off it. As you can see, even though the nut's off, this screw doesn't want to come out. Technically speaking, it should have just pulled out because it's probably that collar there that's rusted in because that's the bit that makes the contact. So that's what I've got to deal with. And I can't really get to it. It's always the one that you can't get to, isn't it? Let me loosen this off for a minute. Hold on. If I turn that around, maybe you and I can see it a lot better. Where is it? Yeah, there it is. Right, okay. Oh, I've dropped my beating speedo drive clip there, look. Oh, that's the thing here, isn't it? Thing's dropping off. I don't know if you can see that. Let's show you. It might get a bit shaky for you. Uh, I really want to drift that out with something. What I needed was a long drift. I might have, um, what can I use in there? I've got a long bit of stud in here. That might do, mightn't it? Just put that on there like that. I need a heavier hammer as well. I've got this stupid little toffee hammer. <laughs> I go from one extreme to the other. <laughs> Let's try this. So technically speaking, that shouldn't be fixed at all. So if I just hold that on there and... Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Sometimes you've just got to change your technique a little bit. <laughs> right, let's get that out. So you can see now what you've got to go through if you want to take your mudguard off, if you want to repaint your mudguard. You've got to take this whole steering column out and uh, hopefully you'll be able to wiggle it over. Like that. Get that speedo cable. There we go. Now we're cooking on gas. Right, there you go. As you can see, no other way of taking it off, apart from up the shaft. <laughs> right, okay, and you can see now the true extent of the state of this. That's got to go to Jimmy's unit, as you know, to be refurbished. And this is the sort of corrosion that you're blinking left with. Let me show you. So this is the extent of it. There's the cup that's got to come off there. So this had to come out anyway for me to change the bearing. So that's got to come out that cup. And I'm going to have to strip all this down into its individual components. I could have left it, but me, I can't do it like that. This has got to come off. Corrosion's your main problem here. Once this is all sandblasted, re-cleaned up and repainted, it will look as good as new. So you might as well get it done. I've got to check the brakes anyway. So as you can see, that still hasn't come out of there. That's where it was being held in there, that screw. Look, it's still stuck in there now. But 
that's got a metal, has it got a metal insert? No, I don't think it has. It's just literally stuck in the plastic there. That should push out. So let me just try and give that a little. I think it is a metal insert in there. Where's my club hammer? <laughs> give it a drop from a great height. Wow, you wouldn't believe that, would you? You wouldn't believe that. That's where it was actually stuck in, and I think... Is that a metal insert in there? I'm not too sure. Well, anyway, that was all that was causing me that issue. Look at the state of the corrosion around that head there. So don't mess about with these, although I could probably put them in the uh, the vinegar. So I might do that, but I've actually had to chew the heads up as well, so I may get some new ones yet. I'll see how we go. Well, that's what we wanted to get off. I've got a couple more other little panels to get off. I'll give that a coat of grey, the, uh, let me turn you around. Again, this is an etch primer, acid etch primer, which is a galvanized spray. Only light coats, no heavy coats on here. You want it to last, you want it to give protection. You don't want it peeling off in great lumps. So I'll just turn that over, go to the other side. Again, not being too critical. Just making sure it's all covered. When we've got good coverage on here, all I'll do is hit it with me gloss black and I'll be happy. Look out, look, I'm spraying quite a way away. And just light coats, look. That's all we're doing. Okay then, we've got the uh, road off. There was a clip in there, I don't know if you saw that in the uh, time-lapse foot, uh, footage, but uh, that's if we were gonna take the bearing out. The bearing actually feels good. So the bearing wasn't what was making it stiff. It was this lot in here. And I don't know if you can see that. That's where the speedo drive runs on. This grease in here is totally congealed and solid. Look, absolutely rock hard. Now bearing in mind, that's running on a little plastic gear in there bearing in mind that's running on a little plastic gear that would have chewed that plastic gear up in no time so you've that stiffness is what we was actually investigating here and i can feel as i say the bearing is as smooth and as sweet as anything so i don't really need to take that bearing out and i'll put that circuit back in there when i finished but this is the cause of our stiffness for the steering so that's easily remedied just with a good clean and a re-grease up so really that's enough i'm going to do today so i'm going to go back inside now have me dinner and we'll see you probably again in the next video. Maybe a Piaggio video, we're not too sure yet. Could be a, uh, could be a, a Trans Am video, it could be something else down the, down the unit, we're not too sure. I've still got to do the trotter van, as you know. I'm just waiting to clear the booth out with Jimmy so that we can actually get in there and prime the whole thing. I've got the primer for it now, I've actually bought the primer. So they'll be coming up in the very near future. So don't worry about that, the trotter van isn't forgotten about. It's just had to take a back seat for the moment. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you again in the next video. And until then, bye for now.